Hi, and welcome back to my series of videos for General Chemistry 1. Last time, we talked about calorimetry, which is the study of heat and enthalpy. In that video, we just looked at the heat changes involved when we change the temperature of an object, like a beaker of water or a piece of metal. Today, I want to build on that and talk about how we can find the heat that goes in or out of a chemical reaction, which will be much more useful for chemists like us. Sometimes a chemical reaction is too difficult or dangerous to reproduce in a lab using calorimetry, so we'll need to come up with a different way to determine the enthalpy change of reactions like those. It turns out that the enthalpies of thousands of reactions have already been measured by chemists over the decades, and often we can use that information to find the enthalpies of other reactions that we're interested in. For example, here's the reaction that takes place between magnesium oxide and water. This is one of the many reactions that people have already studied, so we know that it has an enthalpy of negative 37.1 kilojoules per mole. There are a couple of things to notice about this. First, the enthalpy of the reaction is a negative number. You might remember from the last video that this means that the products have a lower enthalpy than the reactants, and that makes this an exothermic reaction. A second thing to notice is the units of the enthalpy, kilojoules per mole. It's per mole, which means that 37.1 kilojoules, which is 37,100 joules, is released for every mole of the product, magnesium hydroxide. Now what can we do with this information? Suppose we perform the reaction and get 2.00 grams of magnesium hydroxide as our product. How much heat would be released by the reaction? We'll need to do a calculation, and we'll use the same general method we used when we learned about stoichiometry calculations. You might remember that we said then that the first step in a stoichiometry calculation is to convert our known into moles, and that's what we'll do here, too. Our known, the compound we have information about, is magnesium hydroxide. So first we want to find out how many moles of it we have. There are 2.00 grams, so we can convert that to moles using masses from the periodic table. We find that a mole of magnesium hydroxide weighs 58.3195 grams, so that'll be our conversion factor. We want the grams of magnesium hydroxide to cancel, so that will go in the denominator of the fraction. If we were to stop the calculation here, we would get moles of magnesium hydroxide, but what we're really interested in is the enthalpy of the reaction. Luckily, we know the enthalpy per mole, so we can put one more conversion factor in this calculation to convert from moles to kilojoules. The reaction releases 37.1 kilojoules per mole, so that's our conversion factor. We want the moles to cancel, so one mole goes in the denominator, and the negative 37.1 kilojoules goes on top. The units all cancel out, except for the kilojoules, and we get a final answer of negative 1.27 kilojoules. There's another thing to know about the enthalpies of reactions like this. If we were to run this reaction in reverse, it would absorb energy instead of releasing it. In other words, if we were to start with magnesium hydroxide and get magnesium oxide and water as the products, the enthalpy of the reaction would be positive 37.1 kilojoules, not negative. That would make this an endothermic reaction instead of an exothermic one. The important thing to notice is that the enthalpy of this reaction is the same number as the reverse reaction, it's just that the sign has changed. Now that you know that, it puts us in a position to find the enthalpies of much more complicated reactions. That's a much bigger topic, so I'm going to save it for the next video, and this one will be a bit shorter than usual. But in class, we'll get plenty of practice using what we've learned so far. Until next time, have a good week.